Okay, in this video we're going to make a cannon, and the purpose of this, uh, we're going to learn a couple of techniques. One is we're going to learn how to not only uh, develop a little bit better uh, modeling skills, because we're going to model this cannon, but we're going to learn how to use a background image. And so in order to do this, you can see that I have already on this cannon, uh, it's got a nice shape, it has got a material that I got from Metamassive Materials, I think it's ancient bronze, and we can play around with materials, but the main thing is how do I build this thing, and you're going to find out it's much easier than it looks, we're going to use background images. Okay, so we're going to add a background image, and to do this I just make sure my end tab is open, so I'm going to hit uh, M over here, N uh, opens up the end tab, and I'm going to go into my uh, background images, I make sure background images is checked. I drop this down. I can add an image, and I've already downloaded an image from the internet, and I think, let's see, I'm going to take a look for it. If I click on this button, I can see what these look like. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, this image, and I notice that it pops up. Now, if you don't see it right away, there's two things you've got to hit. You've got to, first of all, make sure that you're looking right down the center, either by hitting one or three on the number pad, and then you've got to make sure that you've got the five button tapped in. That toggles on and off um, orthographics view, and uh, so if you don't see it, you're doing uh, 1, 3, and 5 until you see the image. In any case, now I want to move the image so that it's right at the center. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift S first of all to make sure the cursor is at the center, and then I'm going to go ahead and move this guy so he's going to be uh, vertical and right up and down the um, the vertical axis. So I'm looking, I don't see the red axis, I see, uh, actually I think I'll, I'll get rid of the uh, I'm looking right down the y-axis now. So I see red, I see blue, that's x and, and z, and so I don't see the green, that's y. And uh, if I change this, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this guy. Let's see if I can flip him uh, 90 degrees. And uh, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. I think I'll do it negative uh, 90. And um, I'm going to build this guy up. So I want to have the blue center line right down the middle of this guy, and I can use either one of these. Uh, I think I will use this one. So I'm just going to move him using these little toggles, and I'll move him right over. It might help a bit if I zoom in. And uh, I want to get it right down the middle. That's pretty close. And now I'm going to move him up using this toggle. And uh, I'll move him up so that the base is right where I want it to be. I can also just kind of grab this and uh, move this over uh, incrementally, or I could just type the number in. In any case, I'm going to move him right to the base. Now the base is on the red line, and the center is on the blue line, and I'm ready to go. Since the cursor is there, if I come over here to create, I can add a circle. And I can see that my circle is right there. As soon as I move out of that uh, side view, I lose the picture of my cannon, but I just hit 1 to come back in, and it's right there. OK, so what I'm going to do is tab into Edit Mode, and I want to take uh, this circle, and I'm going to uh, shrink him in. Uh, if I click on uh, vertices, uh, the vertices uh, button down here, I can see all individual vertex. And uh, I will, let's see, get rid of some of these guys, and uh, come back in now to this. So um, moving my cannon. I want to make sure this is about the right size for the cannon, so I will scale him in, and I'll start right there. And the key uh, values that are the key buttons I'm going to do are E for extrude, S for scale, and I'm not going to rotate anything, but I want to go right up the Z axis, so I'll hit Z to make sure I'm locked in. So I hit E to extrude, Z on the Z axis, and I'm going to come up here a little bit, uh, and then I just follow the shape of this. Uh, Z again, and I'm going to scale out a bit, uh, E, Z again, so I'm going right up on the Z axis, and I can scale that out, E, Z, and it's going to keep doing this over and over. I'll keep using these same three buttons, E, Z, so I go straight up. Now I want to come in a little bit, so I just come up here a bit, and then I scale it in, and so I can see this getting the shape that's going to match this picture. Uh, e, Z, I'm going to come in here, and then S to scale in. E, Z, I can come all the way up to here. Now it's not perfect, but it's going to follow the same dimensions, same proportions, and uh, that's all I'm really looking for at this point. So I'll go ahead and say E, Z, come up here. I want to get this shape of the bend, so I'll scale them out. Uh, e, Z, come up here, scale out. E, Z, come up in. 
easy come in again now and I'll begin to scale it back in and I'll get that little bump and I keep doing this all the way through I can do a big one now if I say easy and come all the way up here maybe I want to scale that in a bit easy come up and I get that little groove so I'll scale in uh, if you're too far away I'm hitting shift dragging it down so I can make sure I'm pretty close to the actual original uh, easy I can go ahead and bring it all the way up here uh, scale it in a bit, easy, come up and get this little bump, uh, scale it in, uh, and so on. And so I just keep doing this. I'll go ahead and stop here and finish it, uh, and then we'll go ahead and take a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm back into this, and I can see that I have got uh, different, uh, the basic shape of this, and notice that in the front I just have an opening there, and so I want this to come in, and I don't have a picture of the front of the cannon, so I'm just going to have to guess, but I've got all of these guys selected. If you somehow get out of there, you can select just a single guy. If you alt select that, you'll either get a vertical line or keep doing it until you get the circle that you want. And I'm going to extrude this in a little bit. So I simply say E to extrude, and I'm going to scale it in. I'm going to say E to extrude again, and now left click, and now I'm going to go ahead and grab that on the Z axis, and it'll move it back down. Okay, now I can have to finish this maybe off with uh, loop cuts later on, but uh, scale that in a bit, and that's going to be the basic shape of my cannon. Now I've got to get some other parts on here. For instance, down in the bottom, if I look at the bottom part, I can see that it's open. I think I'll get rid of the plane for a minute, drop that down. And as I look in here, this is the bottom of the cannon, I'm going to want to make some changes here. So select that guy, and again, I'm going to hit Alt, and I select that, and I'm going to extrude, left click, and then scale that in. And it doesn't have to be, actually, let's do this. Let's bring this out a little bit, make it a little bit more rounded. Extrude, left click, scale again, uh, maybe bring it out a little bit more. And now I'm going to say extrude left click, scale it all the way down, and I'm going to bring this guy out a bit more, kind of make it a little bit rounded, and I'm going to put another piece there so that doesn't have to be closed off. Now one of the things I'm going to notice at this point, I have the basic shape done. If I look at it, I can see that it looks pretty good, but it's very faceted, and so one of the things I can do, I can just hit smooth to see what it would look like with smooth shading, but what I want to do also is I want to come over here and add a mirror modifier because this is going to change things. So if I add a mirror modifier here and say subdivision certain, sorry, not a mirror modifier, I add a uh, modifier and I'm adding a subsurface modifier, not a mirror modifier in this case, and I'm going to come in here and I can see that it's going to change things a bit because as I add this uh, subsurf, it makes these little bends. And so if I want this uh, structure to come back out here to the side. I make a loop cut and I bring it in and it pulls it all back to where I want it to be. If I want some of these angles to be less rounded, I can go ahead and pull that back. I can do the same thing down here and say uh, control R, bring that in here and so on. Maybe I want that to stay rounded, maybe I want that to stay rounded, but inside here I can add a loop cut and I can get a sharper edge right there. So this is going to be a little bit more rounded. Uh, as I come in here, I can uh, go ahead and uh, make these a little bit sharper by adding a loop cut. Again, I hit Control R and uh, oops, bring it in and uh, slide it up. So that is going to work out pretty well for me, I think. So let's see what that begins to look like. And again, as I come through all these, I have to figure out where do I want this guy to have kind of a sharper edge. And so maybe uh, in here, I want this to be creased to be a little bit more defined so I can bring that in. I can even scale that in if I want it to be even more sharp. Uh, same thing up here. If I come in here, drag that down so that edge will be sharper. And I can do this wherever I want that crease to be a little bit sharper and a little bit more defined. I think maybe down here at the end, I'll look here and say, Maybe I'll do some of the same things here. So uh, come in, drag that in, come in here, drag that down, and so on and so forth. OK, so that's what we're doing. Um, as I finish this, I might see in here, again, I want some sharper creases. And uh, maybe 
I don't want that. I'll go ahead and undo that. So that's good. Now, I want there to be kind of a ball at the end, and so I'm going to click on this guy, and if I hit Alt, I'll get all of those, and I can say Shift S, uh, cursor to select it, and so if I come back over here, I can tab, I guess I'll leave it in edit mode, so I'm going to add a sphere, and it will become part of this object. So I simply say add sphere, it'll go right to the 3D cursor, notice it's already in edit mode, and if I scale this down, I can bring him right in to where I want him to be. And uh, that's looking pretty good. Uh, if I want him to be a little bit uh, less round, I can scale him on just the z-axis. I can bring this back out. And so now I've got a little shape that looks like the back of a cannon. OK, I'm assuming that's what the back of a cannon looks like. In any case, I have this. If I want to see that again, uh, actually here, I can see that the back of the cannon actually looks quite different than the one I made. So I can change that if I want. I can make it look more like this one but I have my artist license to do whichever I choose. In any case, I need to make this piece right here now, and so I'm going to come back out, and I will put my uh, cursor back to the center, and I will take this guy, and I will move him off to the side. Notice that these guys move together because that's a single object, and I want to take uh, this piece right here, and if I look at it closely, it's simply a, a disc, with a cylinder coming out of it, and so I'm going to start this the same way I did the other one. I'm just going to make one up. Uh, I can not even worry about the size because it will kind of figure that out for me. So I've added a circle. If I tab into edit mode, I can begin to extrude this. I'll make kind of that disc shape. I'll extrude on the z-axis up. I'll extrude on the z-axis up again, and this time I'll come way in, and now I'll extrude on the z-axis and make that uh, kind of cylinder shape. Uh, come in like this, and I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll extrude uh, on the Z, and I will whoa, take that back. I'll extrude, and then I'll just simply scale this guy in. So I extrude, left click, scale, and he comes right in. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to add a little ball piece there, so I'll say cursor to selected, and over here I'm going to add a UV sphere, and I'm going to make that smaller and that will kind of finish off that shape for me and it will give me some extra vertices that I don't need but I'm not going to worry about that I just want this uh, shape to be uh, showing me where the edge of that guy is. If I wanted to I could come in here and add a little bit more definition for instance if I had a loop cut and come in here I could add uh, these faces, click on the faces uh, select that, extrude and then scale that out a little bit so maybe that gives me a little bit more uh, definition on the edge. If I wanted to see what that looks like with a um, subsurf modifier, I come back here and I'm going to see that this is going to smooth things out quite a bit so I lose some of that uh, sharpness in the edges, but that's okay. If I come back in, I can, for instance, uh, choose uh, R for loop cut, Control R, and I can add uh, those um, edges back in just the way that I want them. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to take this guy now and uh, check the loop cuts down here. Uh, maybe I will want to bring this guy down. Uh, kind of just flatten that out a bit. Same thing here. I get a sharper edge there. And I think I'm going to leave him just like that. Now, this thing is looking okay. Maybe I made him a little bit too long. Uh, if I wanted to, and I might have to do this, I can come in here and I can select uh, all of those guys and I can extend this part down. Uh, I might have to do that just to uh, make sure he fits into the cannon pretty well. So let's move this guy over. Let's go ahead and say Shift S. I'm going to say Cursor to Center. I'll take this guy, say Shift S, Selection to Cursor. And now this guy is ready to be mounted onto the side of my cannon. If I look back at my picture of the cannon, uh, I'm going to notice that it, it's going to go right before this line right here, and that's sort of a balancing issue, and so let's go ahead and put it there. Um, all I have to do is uh, rotate him uh, 90 degrees on the y-axis, uh, so he's good to go, and I'm going to go ahead and maybe drop him down a little bit, and I can see that he's too big, so I'll scale him down and maybe scale them down again. Let's take another look at the reference image just to see how what size we're at. 
and I can see that the actual uh, the actual guy is quite a bit smaller, so I'll come in a little bit more. I want him to be about the same size as this guy. Uh, put him up in the same position, and now I want this guy to come in like so. And so that's going to be my uh, pivot point for my cannon. It's going to fit into side of a wooden box. And so I'll just go ahead and say Shift D, move him on the X axis, and I'm going to uh, rotate him. So R on the Y axis, uh, 180 degrees, and that's good to go. So now the guy has those two pieces. Now they're not actually uh, joined, uh, so I should actually make sure that they look like they're symmetrical as much as possible, so that this shape and this shape are identical. Uh, that's looking pretty close. Let me bring that in just a bit. And now I'll take this guy, shift select, shift select, and if I say control J, now they're all together. I think I can bump up the subsurf modifier here a bit. And now my cannon looks like a cannon. Uh, actually, I should put in some, let's go ahead and see what it looks like in rendered mode. And not a lot going on there in terms of coloring. So let's go ahead and add a material to this guy. First of all, I'm going to save him. So I say File, Save. And then I'm going to go ahead and append a material. So I'm going to say Append. Actually, I think I already have a material appended. So let's come over here and see. I have Ancient Bronze. And now I have Ancient Bronze on the cannon, and he's ready to go. Let's uh, change his position. So I'm simply going to uh, rotate him on, um, well, let's rotate him on the Y axis, 90 degrees. And hmm, I guess that looks pretty good. OK, so now I will rotate him on the X axis, 90 degrees. And um, I think I want to turn him the other way. So I will rotate him on the Z axis, uh, 180 degrees and he is good to go. Another thing I can do is I can take the um, object and I can take the uh, transform and I can take geometry or origin to geometry and it'll move the origin right to the center of this guy and if I say shift s uh, selection to cursor now it's right in the center of my piece. Okay so let's see what he looks like. I'll move my uh, platform, my, my uh, plane back up just so I get a picture of what this looks like. If I come back here he is good to go. So that's looking like a cannon. And now I just have to make the box for the bottom. You can look at this from the front. I see that he's got a nice uh, cannon shape in the front. Uh, he's got a little tiny ball here in the back. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, that's it.